Hey guys, it's Jenny with the Go Box, and today I'm going to be teaching you this adorable umbrella octopus painting, which is actually inspired by Animal Crossing New Horizons on the Nintendo Switch. Um, my daughter got one for her birthday, and uh, for a couple months she tried to convince me to play Animal Crossing, and I finally relented, and I love it so much. So I joined her island, and I do a lot of deep sea diving on there because I love it. These little guys are really hard to catch. They go super fast. And so sometimes when I'm diving, chasing one, it'll be like five minutes or so till I can actually catch it. And other times it's just really easy and I can catch it with no problem. But anyways, I thought these guys were super cute. I started uh, looking at pictures online of actual umbrella octopus to see what they really look like. And that's what they look like. Well, this is the, the cutified version. <laughs> These little flaps are what they use to swim around, just like fish fins. And then they've got these cute little short, chubby, um, and I don't even know if I'd call them tentacles, but that's probably what they are. So let's go ahead and uh, prepare to paint. I'm gonna zoom in here on what I'm doing. Okay, so here's what we're painting. Got a cute little starfish over there. Uh, this guy is resting on the sandy bottom of the ocean and I put in lots of bubbles because I thought that was fun. Keep in mind that I'm going to be teaching it this way, but you guys can put anything else you want on here. It's your painting, you're the designer. So if you want to put like a white shell down here or you want to do a starfish in a different color, or maybe you want to decorate your octopus a little differently than this one, maybe you don't want eyelashes. Maybe you don't want so many bubbles. Maybe your sand is gonna be a different color. Keep in mind that you can do that. That's what art is. You get to express yourself how you want to. And I'm just gonna guide you along the way. So let's have a look at our colors. We have our standard red, blue, yellow. So those are the primary colors, black and white. And then we have this extra bonus color, which I love for sand. And that's called raw sienna. Another color that would work is uh, yellow ochre or uh, even raw umber mixed with white. There's lots of different ways you can get to a sandy color, but I love this one because it's kind of warm. And our octopus is sort of a pinkish coral color. So it's not entirely pink. It's got a little tiny bit of yellow in there, which makes it uh, a really unique color. And we should have supply wise, you wanna have an old cup that you can fill with water, just about half full for washing your brushes. Some kind of paper towel or paint rag. Oh, I see I already got stuff on there. And then I have, I use three brushes. You might have more, you might have different brushes than I do. It's okay, they're all gonna get us where we need to be. So I, I just use a uh, large brush, which I call dad. Medium is mom and little brush is baby. I figure that's pretty easy for us to remember. And first off, what I wanna do is pick up the dab brush. So I'm gonna dip this in the water cup and just kind of lightly brush it back and forth across the bottom of the cup. And then go ahead and dry it off on your towel. One thing that I like to do is make sure that this metal part on the brush, which is called the ferrule, is dry. Sometimes you'll get sneaky little drops of water that'll collect on there. And then as you're painting, they'll just drop onto your canvas. And it's easy to fix up, but it's kind of annoying. So I always try to remember to, to dry off the middle ferrule as I dry my brush. So first off with this painting, we actually, we go right into drawing the octopus. And so this isn't a layering painting where I paint the background and then the sand and we paint the octopus on top. This time I, I drew the octopus first. So our job right now is to mix the color. Remember, yours can be different than mine. If you wanna make your octopus light yellow or light blue, you absolutely can. But if you wanna make yours this color, I'm gonna teach you how to at least come close. Okay, so first let's grab our palette. I'm gonna put mine right here. You can leave yours off to the side, but I'm gonna put mine here so you can really see it in the light. And the red and the yellow will overpower the white really quick. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape off a little white. Actually, this is more than a little. <laughs> it's about a half. And then I'm gonna use the corner of my brush. I'm gonna pick up a small amount of red. See that? Just a little bit to start. Let's stir those together and see what we get. Definitely turning very, very pale pink. 
So in this case, the white is overpowering the red quite a bit. So what I do is I gradually add more red. So I use the corner of the brush always, just scrape up a little bit, add some more. And I try to mix up enough paint that will fill in the whole octopus, but nine times out of 10, I have to mix more and you may have to do that too. It's really hard to guesstimate how much it's gonna take. So I, as you can see, I keep gradually adding red. This looks about right. So this is like a kind of a bubblegum pink color. And I'm gonna add a little yellow to it. Let's see what that does. Just a little. Oh yeah, see this is changing the color to the color that I want, but I want a little more yellow in there. And I just brush my brush through it and stir it. Looks like, looks like it's a little yellower and maybe even a little more red than that. It's a process. It's fun actually learning to mix colors and to see what makes what makes what color is really fun. So I added more red, which means I'll probably add a little more yellow. Okay, this is about the color that I want. And when it dries on your canvas, it changes slightly usually dries a little bit darker. So I have a lot of paint on this brush from mixing and I really want to use that. I don't want to waste this paint by washing it in my water. I'm going to use that brush to fill the octopus in. But um, we actually draw the octopus on with a different brush. So let's just set this aside. So a lot of times I'll just set it right on my towel, knowing that I'm going to pick it up and use it. I'm a non paint waster. <laughs> I like to, uh, Save it as much as I can. All right, let's scoot this over. Now we get to draw. Now this is really easy to draw. Just keep in mind that the little tiny tentacles are small and round and chubby. And that's what makes this so cute. Let's pick up our mom brush. So that's a medium sized brush. That's what we'll use to draw with. And I'm gonna dip it in the water, kind of loosen up the bristles, <clears throat> give it a little quick rinse. And then dry it on the towel. Make sure that you dry off this metal part. See how I kind of drag it and pull it. All right, let's dip it right in this color we made. And the first part's really easy, but I'm gonna give us a marker point to start. So let's have a look at the original. The top of the head is, this is maybe about four inches. So I just, I just kind of guesstimate right about there, make a dot. You can always change the size of this as you draw it because everything in the background gets painted over. So if you need to redraw it, it's super easy to do. Just know that everything will get covered up. Now I'm going to turn this into sort of a big rainbow shape. And so I'm going to go out this way towards the side of the canvas. And then this side too, I'm leaving about, I don't know, inch and a half to two inches on the side there. So turning this into a rainbow. A rainbow is kind of a little flat on the top, but that's easy to fix. We're gonna add our little swimming fin thingies there. Ear flappers, that's what I call them, ear flappers. All right, so let's come down. Now, we're, see how I'm kind of going in just a little tiny bit? And make this nice and big. You have this big canvas to work with. There's no need to do a tiny little octopus. You can make it a little bigger than you plan on doing. Fill up that canvas. Okay, I hear some fire trucks going on. Well, sometimes that happens here. I'm in a small little town. We don't hear it too often, but every once in a while, um, we're actually really close to the fire station. So we've done this, we've drawn this. Yay. Just imagine everything on this painting disappeared except for this. I think what I'm gonna do now is go right into this cute little side tentacle and then we'll do this one too. So here we go. I'm gonna come down and bend out. And this just goes right out to the side and see how it's just like you're doing a little C shape. And then on this side, same thing, but we're gonna do a backwards C shape. And 
And this one, I, I think that the front too, I love because it, it, it just looks like super cute. Like there should be like a little toy here that he's playing with. So what I did is I sort of bent these two towards each other and I'm gonna do that right now. This is gonna come in like this. And then I do a little rounded gap here. And this one's gonna come down like this. And I've got room for one right there. So I'll do that real quick. Okay, so we've got five tentacles. We know that uh, octopus have eight. So we're actually, on this painting, we end up showing seven because there's gotta be one behind here or it would be really weird. <laughs> so I, I have these two little, uh, they're kind of just a hint or a suggestion of a, a little tiny um, tentacle. So like this one back here, it's just a little peekaboo like that. They can be smaller than these other ones that you drew because they're farther away. And then this one back here, just again, a little bit like that. Now, as you fill this in, you can change the shape. So if you need to make it bigger or kind of change the shape of these, you can definitely do that. And then when we paint the background elements in, you can paint over anything that doesn't belong. Let's make our ear flappers. They're fun to do. So they're shaped just like these. And like this one, and right at the edge of the head here, as the head starts curving downward, I just make a little, it's like a rounded horn. And then I'll do one over here. And they don't have to be exactly the same. They move a lot underwater. So maybe one is looks slightly bigger than the other. So we're seeing a different angle. And there we go. We've got it drawn in. If you need to pause the video and, and uh, redo it, absolutely do that. Yours might be different than mine. Mine is not exactly like this original. I tried to get it close, but it's not exact. I can de definitely see some differences. Like right here, I feel like I could curve that out a little more in here too. Okay, before we do too much, one thing you'll notice, these back, the tentacles back here, they are a darker color and that's just to give it perspective and show that these are a little bit further away. They're not actually darker for in real life. They're just like maybe in the shadow a little bit being farther away. So I'm gonna pull aside a little of this color I mixed and I just mix a little bit more red with it and a little bit more yellow. So you want to color in some couple shades or so darker than your original. And let's just fill those in. You can go right over your outlines so that your outlines are not light pink, they're just this color. <coughs> and this one too. Excuse me as I cough. <laughs> Here we go. Pretty funny looking right now. We're gonna wash the mom brush off and we're gonna pick up the dad brush. So dry the mom brush off. Mom gets to take a nap now. Let's pick up the dad brush. Hopefully you still have paint on it. All I'm gonna do is start filling in this. The whole head. <laughs> I inhaled some iced tea down the wrong windpipe a little while ago. <laughs> It'll be edited out of the video, but this might not be. Okay. Yeah, already running, running low on the paint. I'll try to stretch it as far as I can. I can see there's, there's some tacked up in here. If you need to switch to the mom brush, to fill in these smaller areas, like you might have smaller tentacles than I do, then definitely do whatever feels easiest to you for reaching these little areas. And go at your own pace. I might paint a little faster than you, or you might paint as fast as I do. I've been painting a long, long time. Very, very long, like 
over 20 years, over 25 years. So painting for me is, uh, it comes pretty easy now just because of all the practice and all the years of painting. So I can sometimes go a little on the faster side, but just keep in mind, you can pause the video and catch right up. All right, so I just have my little ear flappers to fill in and obviously I need to fix that. Looks like I didn't put quite enough paint there. I'll just use the dad brush and go right along. Okay, so I can see it's not exactly the same color. It's close. That's okay. Getting that exact color can be a challenge. I wonder if these guys are really as fast in real life as they are in Animal Crossing. They are pretty fast. Okay. <clears throat> that works. This could become anything <laughs> right now. It could turn into all, like an alien or something. It's, it's uh, very different. And I've always said that about undersea creatures that they almost seem like they're from another planet because we don't see a lot of um, the uniqueness that uh, on the, the the creatures underwater have like some of those fish that have the flashlight on their top fin it's a I don't remember what they're called deep sea a deep sea angler fish <laughs> Paul corrected me that is also in Animal Crossing, but they call them something different in Animal Crossing. Do you remember what they're called on, on football Animal? Fish. A what? Football fish. A football fish. Okay. So whatever, they have this funny tentacle thing coming out of their head. And it's got a little light on the end. Isn't that crazy? I don't know of any other animal or creature in nature that has its own flashlight. So that is definitely feeling like something that's from another planet. I'm washing my brush off. I'm going to wash the dad brush off now. Um, we're going to use this to paint in some of the background. And we have to be sort of careful. This is a painting that, uh, because of the way it's put together, we have to paint sand around these. So I, I end up using the mom brush to get in some of these areas. You might even end up using the baby brush. Uh, so we don't, we don't use the dad brush too much for that. But I am going to wash it off really good. Still got pink on it. And dry it off. <clears throat> okay, dry off the middle part. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna bring the original back over here. I'm gonna mix this sand color and we'll paint the sand in. And then by that time, the top head should be nice and dry and we can paint the blue in. The reason I start down here is because the tone of this is not too different from this. So if we smear some pink in there, it's not going to be a big deal. It's pretty easy to cover. These two tones are very, very different. So if we smear pink into the blue up here, it's not a good thing. So that's why I'm going to let that dry while we paint the sand. I'm going to use the dad brush to mix the paint because it's nice and big, but I'll use the mom brush mostly to paint it in on the canvas. So let's make our sand color. Let's see, you might have different colors than I do if you're uh, doing this kit on your own without buying the paint from us. So just do the best you can. It doesn't have to be this color. It can be more brown. I think I was telling you in the beginning, sand comes in all kinds of different colors. In Oregon, it's really, really gray. And uh, there's, I guess down south in the southern part of the state on the coast, some of the sand is a little more brown, if I remember right. But uh, yeah, different colors of sand all over the place. In Hawaii, it's very, very pale. 
So let's, let's mix it up. I'm gonna scrape some of this over, plop it down here in a blank spot. And then I'm going to stir some white into it. Scrape that off. I wanna save a little white. Of course you might have extra white on hand that you can save. So this makes a very um, kind of a lighter beigey tone. <clears throat> I could use the corner of my brush and pick up a tiny dot of black. Okay, I need a little more than that. Just like this, little tiny bit, and stir that in. And that's going to turn it sort of a grayish brown. I didn't have to do that. I could have left it the lighter beige. And then you can play around with it from here. You could add more gold back in if you feel like it, it got too gray. If you feel like it's getting too dark, put more white back in there. If you want pink sand, put some red in there. I mean, why not? It's your painting. You can make pink sand if you want. So let's set dad brush aside. <clears throat> um, I might use some of the paint on the dad brush. So I'm just gonna set it here and plan on maybe using it. We won't, it won't be sitting there long enough that it will do any damage to the brush. Oh, but look what I did there. I hate that when that happens because then when I pick it up, it gets all over my fingers. All right, let's take mom brush, dip it in the color you made. Let's establish our horizon line. <clears throat> so your horizon line is this right here. That's what's dividing the ground from the water, or if you're doing a, a landscape painting, it's like dividing the land from the sky. And this is about eye level with the octopus. On this, you can see it's about halfway from top to bottom. It's right about halfway. So that's probably about where I'll put it here. And I, I like to give it a kind of a cool little arc Maybe this one too, so it looks like there's like a hilly, instead of just being a flat horizon line, it's kind of fun to make it sort of hilly here and there. Like maybe I'll put, put this one up a little bit. And now we're gonna carefully go around our octopi, funny word. And we do outline the octopus in a kind of an orangey color. So right now it's not gonna look super great. <laughs> it's just a, it needs to, to be outlined later on because it'll sharpen up everything and, and make it, these tentacles stand out a lot more than they will right now. <clears throat> so brush strokes, obviously we don't have a, a lot of choice with our brush strokes here because we have to go around objects. So I kind of just go all over Sometimes I'll go up and down. Sometimes I go to the side. Obviously here I have to go around. Sometimes what I'll do is go trace around everything to have it blocked off and then I can just easily come in and, and fill <laughs> the paint in. This time I'm just, I guess I'm just gonna do it as I go along. I'm thinking for my next kid's project, I'm gonna do a penguin. And then uh, I would love suggestions for other kids' projects. I happen to love painting animals. So a lot of our animal paintings that you've seen are, uh, some of them are designed by me, some of them are designed by one of my instructors. But we all, with the kids' classes, we love doing animals. It's so much fun. You can make them really cute. Don't be too worried if you accidentally overlap into the pink. It's really easy to come back in with some of this pinkish color and touch it up. Or maybe your outline that we put on later will cover it up. Sometimes I'll go back and see like as things dry, oh, this needs another coat of paint. Or maybe it doesn't. My umbrella octopus is a little bit closer to the bottom of the canvas than this one. You definitely see right here, I've got a maybe an inch and a half gap. And this one is just like half an inch. <laughs> 
So that means I could put extra things in the, the water background maybe. Maybe, if I have room, maybe I just made this one a little bit bigger overall. Running out of paint here. Maybe I'll have enough to finish off the rest of this. You know, I've got it on my dad brush. So if you have that too, just scrape it off with your little brush. That's helpful. Oh yeah, I'll definitely be able to cover the rest of this without mixing more, which is nice. But if you have to mix more, that's not a big deal. I have to do it all the time. There are other critters from Animal Crossing that I could also paint or be inspired by. I love some of the villagers, but my favorite is Marshall. He is a white squirrel and he gives funny side eye all the time. I swear sometimes he actually rolls his eyes at my character. <laughs> But I paint, actually painted him on my Halloween pumpkin this year. I paint pumpkins every year because they last way longer than carved ones. Now they aren't as fun for, you know, having a candle in. Obviously you can't put a, necess can't necessarily put a candle in unless you carve and paint. But, uh, so yeah, this year I painted a big Marshall face on my pumpkin. It turned out really cute. I think I have a picture of it in my phone, so I'll have to pull it up and show you. Yeah, there's a lot of fun underwater creatures that would be fun to paint that are from Animal Crossing. I always love it when I catch a koi. They are in the freshwater, so the little ponds and stuff. Every time I catch a koi, I put it in an aquarium in my house in Animal Crossing. So I literally have a koi in every single room and I have Oh gosh, I have all the rooms. Four on the main level. No, three. Let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, four on the main level, one upstairs, and one basement. <clears throat> I owe about um, two million bells <laughs> to Tom Nook in the game. <laughs> but I have a koi in every single room because I love them. Okay, that works. That works for me. If you're still catching up, just hit the space bar if you're on a computer. Usually that pauses it. Or if you're on your TV, the remote. We actually watch a lot of YouTube on the TV at home. It's kind of fun. Never used to be able to do that when I was young. Well, YouTube didn't even exist when I was young, so it's pretty cool. Okay. I think I'm just about done with the sand and I'll just take a look and see. I feel like maybe I could change this up. This kind of bothers me how it dips so down so far and then suddenly this one's up here. It looks like I accidentally didn't line them up right. So I'm gonna just fill that in there. That looks a little better and it's still got a little movement to it. Okay, I'm gonna wash the brush, both of them. And I feel like it's cold in here, so I'm gonna holler to Paul to maybe turn up the heat a little bit. We're in December. I don't know when you're doing this painting, but it is uh, December, gosh, what is it today? 19th, almost ready for the big day. I had a little extra time. I got all our Christmas shipments out this past week. We had a lot of art kits go out. And so I thought, I need to do a kid's painting tutorial. Okay. I see a little area. I always find little areas I need to touch up. <clears throat> I'm gonna wash the brush off. It's 
see what we do next. Water, we get to do water next. So we're gonna mix a lightish blue right here. And you can make a darker blue or a lighter blue. Or if you're in Oregon, we know the water is always kind of a greenish gray. <laughs> but I don't wanna paint a greenish gray water. I like to do pretty blue water. So we'll do that. I am going to take my dab brush. And obviously we're using a lot of white in this painting, but we don't use much more. So um, you may not have to put more on your palette. I try to avoid scraping up from this area because that's uh, got some golden yellow in it and it can turn my water uh, greenish. I guess a little bit wouldn't be so bad. I'll plop some of this down here. And I gradually add blue to it by doing that thing where I scrape up bits with the corner of the brush. Gosh, this almost made the perfect color. <laughs> Unusual, usually I have to gradually add more as you guys have seen. Maybe I'll make it a little darker. Pretty color, love that. Okay, I'm just gonna paint the top now because we can use the dad brush for that. And we get as we get closer to the octopus head, we'll wanna switch to a smaller brush, most of us anyways. And this can be pretty streaky. So if you've ever seen, I've actually never done diving at all, but if you've ever seen pictures from under the water, sometimes there's streaks of like darker blue in there. So see, I just streak it right in the wet paint. And it's just a uh, probably water current and different depth levels and stuff. But that's kind of fun to do it. Makes it so it's not just solid one color. You could even streak a little white in here. Down in here, it's gonna be a little more challenging to actually streak colors in because we're working in such a small area. Remember we do outline this little octopus. So go right up to the, the edges here. And it can look like this doesn't look super great, but I'm not gonna worry about it because I know my outline's gonna go right there. Go right up to the sand. I actually designed this painting way back in September. And I had planned on doing a video right away, but uh, we ended up, our fall season hit and our studio was open for a while before COVID levels got too high and we had to close because the governor wanted that for businesses that do indoor activities. So we closed. But yeah, I was really busy in the early part of the fall and didn't get a chance to film this. So lucky Christmas break filming. <laughs> so I said I was gonna switch to the mom brush and maybe some of you already have but I've been having pretty good luck using the dad brush and turning it and using the skinny edge of the brush to get in small areas, the corner of the brush. It's kind of fun about these flat brushes. You can sort of manipulate how they're used. And they're a lot more useful than just painting the bulk of the color in because of how you can turn them and use one edge and then use the other edge. I was pulling up my Marshall pumpkin. There it is, see that? How fun, you like that? It was really fun to do. It actually, even though he seems really simple, it took a bit of time, like getting the colors right. And it, painting on a pumpkin takes extra coats of paint that you wouldn't necessarily think that you need. <laughs> It was fun. I'm gonna turn my canvas because I have uh, this area right here was hard to reach. So keep in mind, you can do that. I do it all the time. It doesn't have to stay on the table the way it is or on your easel, whatever you're using. 
You can turn it all kinds of different ways. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Looks like we're getting there. So right now it's, it's in the messy phase. This is nice and finished off. We will get to this point. But even my pictures in my phone when I designed this painting, it was in this phase. It was in a, a messy phase and that's, that's how paintings develop. They are not pretty the whole entire time. I'm washing the dad brush off. Let's see what, our, what I want to have us do next. I might have us develop the sand a little bit more, but you know what, I'm going to check my photos. Like I said, it's been a while. Okay, I see what I did. So I do have, see here's the original. You can see it was in the messy phase, just like this one. I have a little shadow under the octopus and that was just some kind of little extra thing I did, which probably doesn't need to be there, but it does look nice. It looks like there's a light source back here and see how it's, it's casting a shadow down on the sand. Now I didn't make an exact replica of what this would be casting a shadow. It's really soft and it's just a little bit darker than our sand color. Let's go ahead and do it though. We don't want to leave that off um, since it's on the original. You can leave it off, but I feel like I better teach it since it's on there. Okay, washing my brush, dad brush. I'm gonna dry it off and I need to, I ran out of paint here. I don't have much at all. So I'm gonna remix some of that, of course. And I'm gonna add just a bit more black to it to make it a darker color than this. Whoa, that's dark. Maybe it went overkill. I think I went overkill. I'll add a little more gold back in there. And obviously to lighten it up, I need more white. I might end up having to get more white from this, out of the bottle from this painting. And scraping the bottom of the barrel. Now I probably made it too late. I'm gonna add a little more gold. See how mixing is just a process. So usually what I'll do to see if it's the right color. Sometimes I'll hold up the brush and that's not dark enough. So less black here, it won't go so much at a time. This is looking about how I want it to look. I'm gonna paint a little on there. Well, yeah, that would work. I do feel like it should be a tiny bit darker. And look at me, right it back to my, back to that color I tried to lighten up. Let's see. That probably was the right color. <laughs> it's just hard to tell without painting a splotch on the canvas. So I'll use this color. I'm going to use the uh, mom brush. And remember, you can pick up paint off the dad brush. And what I did is I just I came around here and down. My sand is a little bit wet down here but the paint is sticking. If your sand down here is too wet and the paint won't stick, because that's how acrylic paint works, uh, you can pause the video and have a parent help you hair dry your canvas just for like 30 seconds. Sometimes it doesn't even take that long. So we want this shadow to go from here down. So all of this down here, I'm giving a coat of this shadowy sand color. You thought you were done painting sand, didn't you? <laughs> Adding highlights and shadows though, that's what really makes your painting look nice and polished and finished off. And it gives it some, a light source, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go around this one just a little bit, this one line here, and down, and then off the bottom. I think that works. 
So if you ever feel like you want to soften the edge of the shadow while well, the paint's still wet, if you take a clean brush, it's just, you dry it off so it's just damp, you can kind of go on the edges of your wet paint and soften them up just by running that clean brush right along the edges. And that definitely softened it up. Over here, it actually doesn't look super good. The paint was a little too wet, I think. Okay, so we have a shadow now. Wash the brush. Both brushes. So our ocean water should be drying nicely. It needs to dry a little bit more. If you need to change your water, you can definitely do that. But I think most of us are probably okay. Let's see what color my water is. Well, it's kind of gr light gray. That's okay, actually. That won't cause any issues with the rest of the painting. If yours was really dark black or something, you might want to uh, change the water. Okay, so what I do next is I'll show you on the photo. That's what we do. We're, we're going to put the dots on, but before we do that, we're going to put these uh, eye, what, it, what they are. They're not the eyes, but looking at photos of the umbrella octopus, they have these light, like light uh, eyelids or some kind of just light color around their eyes. And I thought that looks really cute and it's very subtle. So let's do that. Yay, we get to mix colors. So we want to take this color and make it a couple shades lighter. So it's kind of like a light peachy tone. I'll take my mom brush. You don't need much paint. Boy, I'm going through the white here. So I'm going to pick up a little red. Little yellow. Little more white. <laughs> This is about the base color, really close to my octopus, so it needs to lighten up. Very, very light pink. Let's see how that looks. So I literally, I'm going to do these, I'll just do a, a rainbow shape on this side. And I'm just kind of scoot across here, try to do it at the same level. Their eyes are pretty far apart. And now I'm just going to uh, do a smile shape under here so it makes a kind of like a rounded, like a lemon shape for the eye. A rainbow and a smile connected make a lemon. <laughs> Who knew? Now we know. So I'm going to just Make these a little bit wider. My brush stroke's a little wider here. And then the black eye is gonna go right in the middle of these later. Not quite yet. So we put it, if we put the black eye in now, um, they would, it would smear with this wet color. Okay, that is the creepiest sea creature I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty creepy right now. So what we're going to do next is we're going to clean our brush off and use white and we'll put these fun dot designs on. They're very easy to do, way easier than the other stuff we've been doing. We actually use the handle end of the mom brush works perfect for this. You literally just dip it in white and stamp dots. You'll have to continually redip it because it's going to run out of paint faster than the brush bristles do. But doing it that way, you get nice round, roundish dots. So let's go ahead, dip it into whatever white you got there. Let's start over here. And each of these are probably about a half inch apart. I'm gonna follow along here till I get to there, to the inner corner of the eye. Right about to there. And what we'll do now is we're going to continue on until we get right to here. So continue on, like we're just sort of outlining most of this eye with dots till we get to here. 
just right lined up right under the eye. And let's uh, let's do the other one that way too. Each one about half an inch apart. If you're copying mine, maybe you do yours a little different. It's almost like a tr it looks like a tribal design. Pretty cool. There we go. Wow. <laughs> now what we're gonna do, so we've got that. See, here's the original. Doop, doop. And now we're gonna, from this line, this last dot, we're gonna do a line that goes down this tentacle. So it's gonna go dot, dot, dot to there. Again, each one about half an inch apart if that's what you're doing. And then on this one, I'll just do like a row of three. And then this one, it's gonna come from this dot and go down to here. So see how when I dot my brush on, I'm just sort of spinning it into a, a little circular blobby dot it's a blobby dot. It's a technical term. <laughs> blobby dots all over. Okay, so this one, let's just do the same thing. We're gonna start here. This one's gonna go to there with our blobby dots. And I think I'm gonna have Paul grab me some more white paint because I am scraping <laughs> what little paint I have left off my palette. <laughs> and there's not much. So white was the color of the day here, at least for me. So this one's going to go curve down to here. Hand this over and have Paul give me a little squirt of paint. Don't need a whole lot. We just have it for the bubbles there. That's perfect. Probably more than I needed. It's like a little, little dome. Cool. Now how about these guys? I can see I tucked in two little dots and same with the other side. So one, two, maybe you can only fit one. Maybe you could fit three or four. One, two. If you hear the doorbell ringing, it's only because we have customers picking up orders today. There. He's decorated. <laughs> I'm curious to know what pictures I looked at online to come up with. Uh... Obviously I didn't do an, a realistic uh, umbrella octopus, but I know I looked at some pictures of real ones to uh, kind of get a, a feel for how their bodies are constructed and <laughs> whatnot. So we've got our dots. I think we are going to do, oh, we're going to actually put the specks on the sand. Those are easy. We do them with the baby brush, so I don't even know if we've really used the baby brush yet. And we use the brush end. These ones don't have to be perfect dots. They're just little speckles. And that's going to turn this into looking a little bit more like sand. Now, if you feel that any of your sandy areas need another coat of paint, you can do that now. Um, obviously, I wouldn't want to touch my shadow. It's, it's kind of still drying and, and I think it looks okay. But I could, I could in theory, paint another coat of, of sand color on there. But for the video, I'm not going to because I don't want you guys to have to wait for me. So let's take and load up the very tip of these bristles. Just dip the very tip in the black. I wish you could see how much I have. It's the tiniest little amount, probably almost too little. And I'm barely pressing this against the canvas. 
So we know sand is, or maybe you don't, maybe you're going to learn this right now. Sand is uh, basically, it's rocks and shells that have been beat to a pulp <laughs> because of the ocean waves. And uh, they're, that's the fine sand. You, you pass it through your fingers and it's really just lots and lots of rocks. Obviously some salt mixed in there. Shells. So it's very speckly with different colors going on. That's what we're doing right now. We're, we're adding the speckles. In Oregon, our beach is super cold. It's almost always windy. It's hard to find, it's, it's windy and cold more often than not. And the ocean temperature is about 40 degrees year round. It is so cold. But as a kid, you know, you just, I never noticed it. I was just out in the ocean all the time whenever we'd go, 40 degrees, <laughs> pretending it's warm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's super cold. And then the, the wind picks up and the sand blows across the beach and it will sting your legs. <laughs> Doesn't sound very pleasant, does it? <laughs> it's tough to find a nice day down there. They're usually in the fall, actually. And uh, September is a great time to be down at the beach. So I overspeckled this because I was talking so much probably. So mine has a lot of speckles. Yours might have the same or you might do just a few here. Doesn't matter, all sands are different. All oceans are different. Like the uh, in Hawaii, it's like 80 degrees. I could swim in there. That was fun. Okay, uh, what I actually have us do next is um, paint the starfish. Although this is still a little wet for me and it might be for you too. So I think right now would be a good time to skip the step of painting the starfish right now. We'll do it later. And let's get the black eyes in there. So I love the shape of these eyes. I think they're really cute how they're kind of pointed down here. And then it's almost like the shape of like a watermelon seed that's kind of turned on its edge. So let's, let's have a look here. I'll draw one. So what I did is I drew the, the top part of the eye first and then the bottom part and see how the, the rounded part is way up here up in the upper corner. So if I were to draw like a straight line through, like this is our octopus, you can see how, how they're really rounded and pointed upwards. I'll teach you how to do that. We'll do it as best as we can. Okay, so we want to use our baby brush in black paint unless you want to do different eye color. Just dip the brush in the black. Let's put a little dot right in the inner corner of the eye. And it looks really funny right now. And we're just going to kind of hover across here and try to line it up and do the same thing here. Wow, look at those tiny eyes. <laughs> that looks funny. And then I'm going to round up like this. So it looks like he's laughing really hard with his eyes closed at first. And I want to do this one at the same time so I can try to make them about the same size. They're not going to be exactly the same. Let's just get them close. And then now we're, this is going to round down and meet this. So it's like a fat watermelon seed that's turned at an angle. Now what I can do when I color these in with black, I can reshape them and make them a little rounder if needed. I'll try to mimic the same thing over here. And you can see they're not identical. This one's a little rounder down here. So I'll just kind of round this out like that. And when I fill it in, let's see how it looks. I'll probably use the mom brush to fill it in. Just set your baby brush in the water right now. Unless you have smaller eyes then you might use the baby brush. So the eyes are going to be solid black and staring for a bit until we put these cute highlights in. But that has to be done after the eyes dry. Black is actually one of the fastest drying colors, at least the one, the brand we use. I notice it dries faster than any of the other colors. 
I don't know how, but it's just the magic, <laughs> magic of bait. Okay, now I can have a look and see, are they about the same size? Yes, they're not exact. Uh, are they about the same shape? Very close, not exact, doesn't have to be exact. Now the eyelashes, if you wanna do them, you don't have to. Um, so mine's definitely more of a cutesy, <laughs> cutesy umbrella octopus. And I just did three eyelashes in each corner. Obviously we wanna use the baby brush for that. And we wanna use really light pressure on the brush, which means you're not gonna push hard at all. And you have just a little tiny bit of paint on the tip of the bristles. And I just really quickly do a little one, two, three. There we go, these eyelashes are a little longer. One, two, three. I try to do them kind of fast so my brain doesn't try to overthink it. Okay, still sort of dead stare going on here until we get the highlights in. But we're getting there. We're getting close to not a whole lot left to do. What I want to do next is uh, let's get the bubbles going on in here because we've got uh, sand is still drying and we'll do the bubbles. We'll do the starfish and then we're going to outline our octopus and we will be pretty much done. So let's uh, let's go ahead and use our baby brush. Make sure you clean all the black off of it or you'll get gray bubbles which I suppose wouldn't be a tragedy. That would, that would be all right. But let's go ahead and clean it off as best as you can. And we're gonna use white paint just a little bit on the tip of the bristles. So see, I didn't, I didn't load it up with a huge amount of paint because we don't need a huge amount. And what I do is I literally draw little rings of different sizes. So that's all I did first. And then we'll turn them into bubbles. Sometimes I balance my pinky on the canvas, so I'm sort of anchored. You can turn your canvas upside down. I do that a lot because this is obviously a lot easier to reach than going over the octopus. And with my hand hovering over the octopus, I have a tendency to drag my hand through wet paint all the time. So this works out good for me to uh, have it turned upside down. Put as many on here as you like. I could even do a half bubble. When, by doing this, it just makes it look like, here, I'll do one over here too. It looks like the, the image goes beyond what we're seeing. Do one in the corner. Flip this back around. Yeah, that looks like a good amount. Um, let's see, I do feel like I could put one right here, like a little baby. And then I just put a little shine in each one. So the shine is at the top, kind of top upper left corner, just a little arch. So you're following the circular shape, but it's just inside the bubble. Up here doesn't get much of one. <laughs> this probably won't get one at all. It is bubbly under here. Maybe our little octopus has gas. That's what it is. Very bubbly. Or he's swimming in soda, which would be weird. So you can see the bubbles have little trails of dots below them. That is way easy to do. Let's have a look. Super cute. Just kind of adds to the whole like <laughs> soda feel. <laughs> Bubbling water, maybe he's in a hot tub. I want to use the handle of my baby brush, just like we were doing the handle dots here with our medium Le Mans brush. Let's dip the baby brush in the white and literally dot, 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 little trails of tiny dots. And they can be all in a line or you can kind of do them cattywampus like I am. I like to give them a little movement. So 
So using the brush handle the, for the, with the baby brush, for these little dots, this is a technique I use when I'm painting stars or snowflakes. Or uh, sometimes I'll paint in the summer, I'll do like um, dandelion, like wish flower paintings, and I'll use the dots to make the, the whole wish flower. So it's, it's a tedious process for that, but it looks really cool. I'll show you, let's see, I did a snowman painting the other day. I just wanna show you how I use them for snow. And so, yeah, I used the, the handle with all of these little snow dots. And I thought that one turned out really cute. Top to the side. Okay. Hopefully your bubbles are looking good and getting close to done with those. My octopus is definitely, as it dried, a lot more pink than this one, but I'm okay with that. I actually like the color it turned out. Let's do a starfish. This is pretty dry down here. And you get to decide what color you want your starfish to be. I'm going to use the mom brush to mix the paint, but I'm going to actually paint it on with the baby brush. We didn't use much red in this painting. I knew we used, used it for this, but not a lot. You can see how much is left. Same with the yellow. I'm gonna make orange first, just swirl the two together. So you can make a yellowy orange by pulling more yellow in there. You can make it more of a carrot type of orange. Or you can make a um, more red orange. Or you can add a little scrape of white and turn it some level of peach. The more white you add, the more peach in tone it's going to be. But I'm going to use this color, maybe a little more red in there. If you add blue, let's see what happens if I add blue to this one orangey color. It doesn't make a, a super pretty color. It's kind of a grayish purple. Now I like my purple without gray. So if you wanna make purple, you can mix blue and red. Wash, 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 let's see what that does. Plop and plop. So I definitely made a very grapey violet. I don't know if it's easy to see on the monitor with the lighting. And then what I can do with that is I can add white and turn it lavender. Oh, that's pretty. So that would make a really cute starfish color. I just, and you can adjust it. It can be a more pinkish lavender by adding more red or it can be more on the blue side. You can add a lot more white and turn it really light. But I'm gonna go with this color because I think this is the color I'm gonna to use to outline the octopus with. And I'll show you how to mix that at that point too if you did a different color. So wash the mon brush off. Now I know most of you probably know how to draw a star. And even though our starfish looks like this, I actually start by drawing the typical five point star that you learn in the first grades of elementary school. Like first grades, I mean kindergarten, first grade, second grade. I don't remember how old I was when I learned how to draw one, but it was sometime, sometime then in those years. So I'm just going to, you know, you can decide where you want it to go. Maybe you have more room over here. Maybe you have more room over here. Maybe you have more room back here. Maybe you want to do more than one starfish. That's okay. But I'm going to start by making a five-pointed star. So, you know, we start with this triangle shape, and then we draw the line up here. That looks like it's like a cave drawing. <laughs> and then we're gonna draw a line straight across here, almost ready. Mine's gonna be a little starfish. And then these two connect. One, two, three, four, five. That's a cute little starfish, it's so tiny. So then to turn it into being more like this shape, which looks like a true beachy starfish, I will sort of round these ends and in between each, rather than having this sharp angle, I kind of scoop. So yeah, each, each little angle that makes up the outside, I'll scoop it in rather than have it be such a, a harsh angular shape. 
And it ends up uh, making your starfish a little bigger because you're extending the arms or whatever those are called. What are they called on starfish, Paul? Tentacles? <laughs> I don't know either. We'll just say arms for now. Limbs. Your starfish limbs. So you can see now it has more of that ocean starfish look. And I filled it in, obviously. Probably didn't need to say that. <laughs> it's like its little friend. That's really cute. I like that. And like I said, you could do more than one. I could do it. Let's do one back here. Just because they're fun to do. This one I'll fill in and just see how it looks with the sharp edges. And that would be fine like that. Obviously, it's, it's such a small thing. There's not a lot of room to manipulate it. It's Patrick Star. Cute, cute, cute. Liking it. Let's outline our octopus. Now for this one, Probably the baby brush is the one to use. It's not a super thick outline. It's not like crazy thin, um, but it's not like, like my medium brush would give it probably too thick of an outline. And I always, I always start kind of like I'm working around the face of a clock. So I guess technically I would start right here, but I'm gonna start at uh, 11, 10, 11 <laughs> on the clock and go around. I draw right over the top of these back tentacles. You can see that my outline came right over the top because they're behind, so that looks better. And let's use the mom brush. So for those of you who mixed a different starfish color, or you wanna, maybe you wanna outline your octopus in a different color. I like this color because it's in the same family. It's kind of that corally pink. And so it's not like, like a black outline would probably be a little too harsh. And so something in the same color family as what you painted your octopus works really good, but darker. So I mixed the, the yellow and red, and then I put in a little bit of white, and that's how I came up with this color, which is, uh, it's not pink and it's not orange. It's actually kind of a coral color for me. So if you need to mix that up, it was red, yellow, and white. And you can play around with it. You can make it uh, lighter than mine. Like I could go lighter, it's, I mean, that's, this is really light, but I do like this color for that. So it's a starfish color for me. And I'll start with this ear. I'll go right along here. I balance my pinky on my canvas. Uh, remember you can turn your canvas upside down if that's easier to reach. Your brush is gonna run out of paint right away. You probably get around the ear and then need to re-dip it in. That's just the, the tedious way the outlining goes. You run out of paint right away. But look how much better that looks than this side. So much cleaner and more crisp, separates it from the background a little more. <laughs> this one has a lot bigger uh, head flaps than this one. <laughs> Maybe it can swim a lot faster it's the upgraded model. So remember, I'm going right across these. But as I get down in here, I'm going to have some special instructions. So this I'm going to bring right to here. And for this one, I'm actually going to, you can see I did it on here. I kind of came up. So it makes it look like this is closer to us than this is by bringing a line up here. Look at that. Now this looks like it's more, you know, behind this one. We're almost to the point where we highlight the eyes, which I love because it, it turns it from being sort of dead eyed <laughs> to having some life to it and looking super cute. So I would say this painting is maybe a little more challenging than some of the other kids' ones we put out, only because the shape is so unique. 
Um, it's not quite like long tentacled octopus, which is a little easier to draw. This one has short little uh, tentacles, which when they're, you know, kind of spread out in underwater, they, they look like an umbrella. So remember, we're going to go straight across this back tentacle like that. And then I'm just going to connect these two. Your outline might be slightly lumpy. Mine is, definitely. It's hard to get a perfect line. And that's okay. So I wanna outline these back ones now. It's just the outside shape. That's all you have to outline, like this. And like this. I love it, cute. Way cute. Let's get some highlights in those eyes. Now for the highlights, let's have a look. I do two swoops of white. So up here, kind of like the bubbles, we do like a curved line. And they want you want them in the same upper corner. So this is upper right corner. This is also kind of upper right corner. And then down here, angle to the, towards the left and down, I did a dot. Angle towards the left and down, I did a dot. Now you can use your little brush, your baby brush or your mom brush. Either way, if you have really big eyes, you might want to use a mom brush. If you've got eyes on the smaller side, baby brush. I'll use the baby brush. I think it's about the right size for mine. And just going to do a little swoop here. Oh, we still need to put dots on our starfish before we're completely done. And this one too, I'll just skip right over and do a little swoop up here. Looking cute already. And down here, just go to the, towards the, uh, you're gonna go down left at an angle, just do a dot. Same here, down left, dot. Look how much better it looks now. So cute. Yeah, I like it. Let's look at them side by side. A little different. <laughs> dots on the starfish. So I did two starfish, so I have dots to do on both. You can use the handle of your little brush, or if your starfish is really tiny like this one, I'll probably use the brush end, just the very tip of the bristles. I'm gonna start with this one because it's, it's a little more dry than this one. Both of them for me are still pretty wet. I right, well, the way I start this off is right in the center of the starfish, I put a dot. And then I just go down with a little row of dots down each little arm. Right from the center. You're always starting from that center dot. These remind me of little pearls. Underwater critters are sure cool. They have these cool natural decorations and some have flashlights. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm just gonna put a couple more dots clustered into the center area. And then for this one, I guess, I don't know, the handle might be a little too big. I'm gonna wipe off the white off the handle of the brush. You don't wanna let it dry there. I know I do it sometimes. You could pick it off after it's dry, but I try to remember to clean it off so that it doesn't build up on here because then the next time you do dots with the handle, they can be really too big. So this little guy, I'll use it. See how I have just a little paint on the tip of the bristles, just a tiny dot, and then go down each arm tentacle or limb, whatever you want to call it. And that is all. We finished it. It looks really cute. I hope that you really like yours too. You can keep working on it after the video is over if you want. Uh, there's different things that could be done. You could add like lighter highlights. You know, I'll do that real quick to see what it looks like. I'll be the guinea pig here. 
I could use a little white and so we've got a light source coming in here. We just do a little white highlight there and one here. This is optional. It's just supposed to look like there's light hitting the top of the head and highlighting it. I don't use a whole lot of paint on my brush. But yeah, that looks cute. Could have left it off, but I actually kind of like it. But the most important thing when you're done, you are the artist on this. And I'm saying it's the most important thing and realizing I forgot to do it on this one. You want to sign your painting. And Baby Brush works great for that. I always just use my initials because it's a big... I mean, this is the, the um, subject matter, which is our octopus. It takes up a large amount of the canvas. And doing your whole name down here, unless you can write really, really small, it's, um, it's a little tough. So some, some students in class do their first initial last name or they're just their initials or just their first name. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. I'm going to use the coral color that I outlined my octopus with. And I literally just... My signature over the years has just become two little loops with a dot just because it's really fast and it, it kind of looks sort of decorative, I guess. <laughs> and um, I like it for doing these quick little paintings. I better sign this one too. Done in September, signed in December. There we go. So let's have a look at them next to each other just because I wasn't able to move that paint palette earlier. There, it's like they're siblings or a couple, <laughs> something. They're super cute. Um, it's funny how they ended up being different colors, just probably a lot more yellow in this one. But I, I like the second starfish. You could add white shells down in the bottom like I was talking about. But it's funny how these line up. <laughs> I didn't plan that, but you know, I could hang them together and, and it looks like they're in this, almost in the same landscape, although the sand is slightly different color. But I'm gonna go back to myself now. I hope you guys had fun painting this along with me. I hope you'll join me again. I'm gonna try to do some more kids paintings and I'd love to hear from you what you wanna paint. You can comment on uh, the YouTube thing or uh, message us on our website, gobox.com. And I'd love to, to uh, see your paintings too, if you want to attach them to a message. But uh, I hope you guys have, I guess it's December 19th. I hope you guys have awesome holidays, great new year, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much.